our story spans the coasts and goes back centuries. Back when Frisbee Pie Company was delivering hot pies throughout New England, including to students at Yale University, who after having their nice picnics, would flip those pie tins over and toss them around the quad. But like the polite students they are, they would warn someone that a metal disc was flying at their head by yelling, Frisbee! A few decades later, when Fred Morrison wanted to play with his kids on the beach in Los Angeles, instead of grabbing a beach ball, he grabbed a cake pan that he only paid a nickel for. But while throwing it around at the beach, somebody offered him a quarter. He's like, hmm, there might be a business opportunity here. <laughs> so he improved on that cake pan a bit and to protect his innovation, got himself a patent. In fact, a design patent. What's patentable? The US Supreme Court has told us anything under the sun made by man. But for a design patent, it has to be new and it can't be obvious. And it gives you the right to block anybody else from using a product that uses that design in the marketplace. And that's what Fred wanted. So, what was Fred's beautiful design? Well, it looked a lot like a flying saucer. And unfortunately, in the space age, he named it, well, after a planet we no longer believe is a planet, it, it was the Pluto Platter. <laughs> but it started selling anyway, so much so that he wanted to go to some real experts at distribution. Those folks at Whammo that were selling the hula hoop. <laughs> but the folks at Whammo had visited Yale and they had a better idea for the name. They decided to call it the Frisbee. Now, it just so happened that that pie company went out of business at the same time. So we don't have to talk about trademark disputes here. <laughs> now, Fred's patent was about to expire, since patents don't last forever. And Whammo wanted to protect their marketplace as well. So back to the drawing boards. They had to figure out how to make their toy even better. What were they going to do? They had some brilliant people on the team. In fact, one of the most brilliant people on the team was this guy, Ed. Ed Hedrick. And Ed figured out if you add one thing to that throwing disc, we can get a utility patent that will last even longer and give us protection in the marketplace. But it had to be something useful. That's the addition that utility patents require. New, useful, not obvious. And this is the patent that they got. You see the amazing difference? This is the old one. This, this is Fred's. But Ed, steady Eddie Hedrick, <laughs> he added the rings of Hedrick. <laughs> the little ridges on the edge of the Frisbee, that's all it took to create a new, useful, not obvious product. Now, like we know, patents expire. So when Flash Flight, another company who was using the rings of Hedrick, wanted to, they were allowed to because the Whammo patent had expired. But the Flash Flight patent is still active and it uses a fiber optic lighting assembly that Whammo can't use because another company has it. So they have to go back to the tried and true technology that they used in the 70s if they want to play at night low in the dark. <laughs> and so, with that, Frisbee!